the most commonly used illicit drug, with 18.9 million users. That's 79% of current illicit drug users. And according to the public polling survey by the Marijuana Policy Project in 2013, 58% of Texas voters support making marijuana legal for adults and regulating it like alcohol. This promotes a need for the current law to change. On our side, we have two, um, two advantages. The first one is the more obvious. We would be able to tax and regulate um, marijuana. As I previously mentioned, marijuana demand is already high. Although we are advocating personal use, we believe the opportunity to tax and regulate marijuana could benefit our state. According to Downs in an SF Gate article in 2014, Colorado has made 1.24 million, between 1.24 million and $3 million in taxes in the first 30 days of business. With their taxes, they are spending that tax money toward drug awareness programs, training for police officers to spot drug impaired drivers, nurses in schools and, out schools and outreach programs for at risk youth. So this would benefit the society at large. Also, according to CBS Denver in 2014, um, they, I'm sorry, uh, according to Texas Public Policy Foundation in 2013, Texas currently spends on average $21,390 per year on each inmate in jail. So our second advantage would be that this legalization would alleviate jail space. 79% um, of Texas opposes jail time for drug offenders. And according to the Marijuana Policy Project in 2014, Texas made over 70,000 arrests in 2011 for marijuana-related offenses. And so in summary, Texas, we believe, can economically benefit if we follow through with this proposal. Our two advantages are mainly regarding the taxation and regulation of marijuana. And our second one is that it would be able to alleviate jail space, which is definitely, um, it's definitely effective for Texas since Texas, as I've already said, um, has, arrest, has made 70,000 arrests um, for marijuana related offenses. And so that is our, that's, the, that's it. Thank you.
Yeah, it's okay. play. We, the opposition, believe that we should not legalize the use of recreational marijuana. There are many costs for the state of Texas regarding the legalization of recreational marijuana. One major cost is the safety of citizens in border towns of Texas and border patrol officials with regards to the violence associated with the Mexican drug cartel. In an article from San Diego County, it states that Mexican drug cartels have placed a $250,000 bounty for the kidnapping or murder of Border Patrol agents. We are against the legalization of recreational marijuana for two main reasons. First, Texas government has majority conservative Republicans. Evidence from Texas GOP states that Republicans now have majorities in 107 Texas counties that contain nearly two-thirds of the state's population. In addition to this evidence, Texas Republican Governor Rick Perry responded to the idea of the legalization of recreational marijuana with, it's basically saying it's okay for you to use. What's that going to cost society? Because of a large number of conservative Republicans in Texas, a movement for the legalization of recreational marijuana could result in a larger, more severe conflict between political parties in Texas. With that being said, the amount of Republicans in political power in Texas is the majority. So the likelihood of a bill passing for the legalization of recreational marijuana is practically non-existent. Our second point is that if we legalize the use of recreational marijuana, there would be an increase in Mexican cartel-related violence and drug activity on U.S. soil. It is stated that the nation's acting federal police chief was shot dead in May 2008 in an attack attributed to drug traffickers lashing back at President Felipe Calderon's offense against organized crime. In an article from Creators, it states that Americans must not mistakenly dismiss the Mexican drug-related violence as an isolated, remote threat. Since January, more than 1,000 people in Mexico have been killed. 500 of them were in Ciudad Juarez, a city of 1.3 million people separated by only metal fences and concrete canals from El Paso, Texas. This shows that the legalization of recreational marijuana will result in an increase in violence. This can also be proven by evidence from Sylvia Longmore's article, which says, it's unlikely that Mexican cartels would close up shop in the event of legalization, even if it meant a serious drop in their profits from their most successful product. Cartels are economic entities, and like any legitimate company, the best are able to adapt in the face of, of a changing market. Additionally, the cartels make their money from more than just marijuana, drugs like cocaine and methamphetamine. The cartel has shown a remarkable ability to adapt as market forces and drug policies shift. This shows that if we remove the cartel's marijuana market, they will begin to sell more of their harsher drugs and violence will increase. Because of these two main points, we can see that the legalization of recreational marijuana should not be considered for Texas. First question, uh, marijuana policy uh, poll states that 58% of Texas voters support making marijuana illegal and regulating it like alcohol. Uh, doesn't this show that Texas is moving towards a, a movement of legalization? Okay, that might be true about the general public, but that doesn't say anything about uh, conservative members in office that we have. And uh, considering that you know Texas is predominantly Republican, in order to you know even implement such a thing would probably end up being a waste of time. And uh, so we're counteracting that because 58 percent that's the general population, but Texas is a whole is still Republican. So. Do you think that do you think that the Republican Party is generated by revenue just like the uh, can you can you rephrase that? Like, do you like do you think that do you, do you think they even consider the issue? Do you think that they could benefit from legalizing marijuana like the Democrats do? That we I'm sure they've thought about it. I mean, um, you know, but that doesn't mean that it's the overall majority that feels that way. I'm sure there's a great percentage of Republicans who do think that marijuana should be legalized. But I also think there are probably Democrats out there who feel the same way, and we feel like that will kind of offset that and. Uh, Mexican government is known for being corrupt, but how is 
that comparable to the U.S. and what your evidence for? Uh, well, that is true that, you know, the Mexican, it's easier for the officials in Mexico to be corrupted. And in fact, that just, uh, that's just added reason for the cartels to be more violent because if they are unable to bribe the police officers, the next step or the next altern or alternative to that is to threaten them and, uh, you know, threaten their family, which uh, that's what goes on in Mexico with, uh, with the officials that don't cooperate with uh, the cartels. They end up either killing them or, you know, killing their family. It's causing a lot of problems. So we think that if you, you know, yeah, they can't be corrupted, but because of that, they're going to end up.
uh, wouldn't it be more beneficial for officers to pursue their time on high crimes, which will better, which will provide better security um, for the state, as well as save money since there are higher, there's higher crimes to be focused on and not marijuana related offenses. Yes, sorry. Um, <laughs> Wouldn't it be more beneficial for officers to pursue their time on higher crimes as compared to lower? Um, well, as according to society, so like lower. murder and stuff. Yeah. Just okay. Well, with the legalization of marijuana, like you're gonna get some higher crimes from the from the drug cartels that are like getting money lost from marijuana being legalized. Basically, they're gonna switch to harder drugs and they're gonna be more pushy about their money and they're gonna start killing your family if you aren't gonna give them. Are they, do you have evidence? I kids. Um, yeah, let me see in here real quick. Sorry. Um, let's see. Um, well, I know in like the Washington Post it said that the, the drug cartels have shown remarkable ability to adapt to the market forces in a drug policy shift. So they're going to adapt, like, if marijuana is legalized, they're going to be like, oh, well, and um, they're going to go into meth and cocaine, and from there, it's going to cause, like, they're going to want to smuggle meth and cocaine in through people, like they already do, and it's going to be worth more, so they're going to be more likely to murder a young girl to smuggle in the meth. Okay, one more question. What are you... Recreational. 
recreational? Okay, because um, in the Austin Chronicle in 2014, 50% barely wanted to legalize medical marijuana. So that was kind of weird. Um, you also say that the number of people who believe that marijuana is more legal has been cut in half, yet only two states have passed it that, is legal to, that it is legal to smoke uh, recreational marijuana. So don't you think that morals has nothing to do with it since uh, legalization of recreational marijuana has not passed in 48 out of 50 states? Well, I read that a journal, Attorney General James Cole announced that the Justice Department would not challenge the, legal, the legality of Colorado and Washington's successful referendums provided that those states maintain strict rules regarding the drug sales and distribution. Okay, um, okay so you're also saying that uh, there, we have no evidence to back the fact that uh, drug cartels can get more violent, but according to the Mexican Institute of Competitiveness, when Colorado legalized marijuana, drug cartels are going to lose $1.425 billion. So what you're saying is that just because we don't have evidence or exact data of uh, drug cartels resorting to violence, um, that our claim is invalid? No, I'm not saying it's invalid, but we're saying you can't compare Mexico's government to the U.S. government because they're two completely different things. Okay, but ours also was about Colorado legalizing it. So we, I mean, we believe that it is going to push it forward. I mean, you lose billions of dollars, you're not going to be okay with that. You're going to get more violent, and uh, that's creating all the violence that you have. Um, okay, so you're willing to risk the safety of citizens of Texas just because we don't have any concrete evidence. That's actually a logical fallacy at ignorantium because you're just saying just because you can't prove it doesn't mean it's not true. Okay. Uh, so are you saying that uh, no knowledge? Uh, she got the final word. <laughs> Class terms, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> so again, we need the Department of Police Texas should legalize the recreation of use of marijuana. Uh, to begin, the uh, polling side said that the FDA won't allow marijuana distribution for research, let alone recreational use. There's a shift in that um, that just happened recently, March 7th, according to G G uh, GW Pharmaceuticals. Uh, the FDA just granted them clearance to proceed into phase three clinical trials for a, a drug that will um, help with childhood epilepsy. And this drug is actually cannabis-based. Um, secondly, you also mentioned that the uh, Texas climate isn't best, causing uh, plant growth to be mediocre compared to other areas. But according to the New York Times um, author, she said that with the right equipment, Anyone can easily grow marijuana indoors and make profit. Um, also, law enforcement officials said that growers could buy supplies from a legitimate uh, shop and get expert advice from internet publications and magazines. You also mentioned that Rick Perry was uh, advocating decriminalization, but what he also failed to, uh, to mention was what he said after this quote, and what he said was that we need to look into decriminalization to keep people from going to prison and potentially destroying their lives. Um, marijuana legalization has our jail, jail cells pretty crowded at the moment. Uh, Texans already spend almost, uh, almost $3 billion every year to incarcerate people into state facilities. Uh, these are people who don't pose a legitimate threat to public safety, and they shouldn't take up costly prison or jail, jail beds. And this is according to Texas Criminal Justice Coalition. Uh, also, marijuana legalization will ultimately save taxpayer uh, taxpayer dollars. Of the entire Texas Department of Criminal, Criminal Justice population, 48.5% 48, 48 are incarcerated for nonviolent offenses. This costs taxpayers almost $4 million per day, and this is from the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. There was uh, recently, last uh, last August, there was a uh, there was an incident at a farm in Arlington, Texas. It was called uh, Garden of Eden. They were um, they were invaded by Arlington police because the Arlington police had gotten word that um, they were growing marijuana and they weren't. So they came and they had a massive invasion with SWAT and uh, weapons. And this was just another instance of how. Um, 
police departments are using unnecessary force for less, uh, less serious crimes. We, the opposition, believe that Texas should not legalize marijuana. Um, one of the things that you guys stated was that 48% uh, of Republicans in office support legalizing marijuana. Now, again, we don't know where you're getting that from because we just pulled up this from the Austin Chronicle that says that 50% of Texas Republicans support legalizing medical marijuana. Medical and recreational use are two completely different things. Um, you also said that uh, Texas, or just people in general, are a lot more accepting of marijuana use since the 1970s, and uh, they considered it a sin back then, and a moral problem or whatever. But the thing is that uh, education and you know uh, this information on marijuana is, is a lot more uh, readily available. You know, it, it was a lot worse back then. People really didn't know the details and you know the side effects and whatnot. Now that people are more aware of it, uh, of course they're going to be more accepting, but that doesn't mean that they're going to be accepting of it being easily accessible to younger people, which technically it would be if you started selling it in stores legally. You also... to uh, come back and retaliate because they, 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 the majority of their uh, revenue comes from these illicit drugs. Well, that may be true, but you also have to remember that marijuana does account for a large number of uh, their revenue. So they're just not, they're not going to just be like, oh, okay, you know, well, that's fine. We're just going to, you know, just keep doing our own thing. They're going to push for harder drugs. And not only that, they're going to try to retaliate and uh, come back at, like they do in Mexico and try to threaten police officers and uh, border patrol agents uh, if they're put in that situation. And, uh, yeah. Today, not a political one. 
So if marijuana is legalized, the negative argument is saying that the violence will be increased. But what they fail to realize is that the revenue will be taken away from the cartels. So it will break down the main, their main source of income, which is 60% marijuana. Now, focusing on the FDA statements, um, has not regulating med medicinal marijuana negatively affected medicinal dispensaries in California? What about Colorado? I don't see any of that happening. Also, in the argument pertaining that the economic stance of Texas is higher, at what point should there be a cap off? Yes, Texas is doing extremely well in this current economy, but there should never be a limitation placed on opportunities for ec economic success. In conclusion, political party and moral issues aside, incorporating this tangible item into the Texas economy would benefit our great, great state by providing extra funds to input into other services as well as alleviate jail space and let's be honest, we'll make everybody happy. <laughs> <laughs>